Radiation treatment actually is not just one method of treatment, but nowadays especially there are so many different ways that radiation can be applied for prostate cancer. And of course, oftentimes the, the first question patients have is whether it's effective and it's, it's highly effective treatment. It's essentially considered on a par with surgery. And so I think all patients should definitely consider radiation as an option. And there are multiple ways, again, that radiation can be performed. There's conventional radiation treatment. Nowadays, uh, what's called intensity modulated radiation and image guided radiation is generally the standard of care. Uh, so we often call those IMRT or IGRT. But within those, the, the what has been great is in the, the recent few years, there's been a shortening of the course of radiation. So in the past, patients often had to come for seven and a half to eight and a half weeks of radiation treatment, which of course is very time consuming. And recently there, there have been many studies now which have shown that oftentimes it can be just as safe and just as effective to do a four week or a five and a half week course of radiation and uh, even shorter courses called stereotactic radiation can be used for some patients. And that only entails uh, essentially five treatment visits. So it is much more concentrated into a, a shorter course, which is much more convenient for patients. And then there are other techniques as well. There is brachytherapy, which involves placing radioactivity directly into the prostate. So it, it's a highly highly specific, highly sparing way of treating the prostate. And there's also proton treatment, which we offer at Johns Hopkins. And protons have some potentially tremendous advantages, both in terms of the, the type of damage that it inflicts upon the prostate cancer, and also in, in terms of the, the spatial distribution of the radiation, because proton beams have a unique quality where they will penetrate the tissue, even being off very low amounts of radiation, and then essentially stop once they reach the prostate, and thus not giving the other tissues past beyond the prostate any further radiation. So there are a lot of different ways and a lot of different considerations for patients who opt to receive radiation treatment. Radiation treatment definitely continues to evolve and there continue to be many improvements that have been made even in the past five years. One of the improvements has been to reduce the, the risk of rectal damage or rectal side effects. So because the prostate is essentially right next door to the rectum, in the past patients would sometimes develop problems with their bowel movements. And one of the things that we have helped develop at Johns Hopkins is a method where temporarily a patient will have a small needle placed between the prostate and the rectum, and we insert some material there, which essentially moves the rectum away from the prostate while they are receiving the radiation. So that's a one-time procedure. This material stays there, but eventually over many months, it's broken down by the body. But the patient is able to receive the radiation treatment and have the rectum be mostly spared, if not completely spared, from receiving high doses of radiation. And that has definitely made a significant improvement in the side effects that we see patients experiencing. There's also been interest and developments in terms of partial treatment of the prostate. So Many years ago, for breast cancer, uh, research has shown that patients do not have to have their entire breast or organ treated and that one can only just treat where the cancer is located. So that had many improvements in terms of the quality of life for patients. And in prostate cancer, there is a lot of interest and in research ongoing in doing the same sort of approach where patients who have cancer maybe in just one small part of the prostate 
currently we would treat the entire prostate or remove the entire prostate, but nowadays we can consider just treating a portion of the prostate. Um, so we do have research ongoing to study that potential and certainly the hope is that that would provide many quality of life improvements for patients. Even though protons have been around for some time, one of the unique aspects of what we are able to offer at Hopkins is a much more technologically advanced proton treatment, which is completely image guided. So our proton machine is able to uh, incorporate CT scans, and that allows for a highly precise setup in terms of making sure that the protons are going to the appropriate uh, location within the body. And then what we're also excited is that recently there has been uh, uh, development where we are able to turn the proton beam on and off during the treatment while monitoring the position of the body. Uh, so this is very key in organs which have more motion during respiration or breathing but it can also be used for treatment of, of areas which have any potential motion during the course of the radiation treatment. There is much interest in focal therapy for prostate cancer. We do currently have a clinical trial which is geared toward treating patients with limited amounts of cancer with focal therapy, specifically brachytherapy. And that trial also incorporates PSMA imaging, which is the newest form of imaging for prostate cancer, which can help identify the locations of the prostate cancer within the body. Other trials would be to use immunotherapy in conjunction with radiation treatment. So, Many patients may have heard about immunotherapy because it has been a tremendous development in improving the cure rates for many different types of cancers. And there is research into immunotherapy for prostate cancer. And so we do have a clinical trial which employs immunotherapy along with radiation for patients who have either intermediate or high-risk prostate cancer. I mentioned earlier about the development of a method to spare the rectum during prostate radiation. And we do have a trial which looks to build upon the results of the rectal spacers that are currently available. And we are in development of new spacers which perhaps offer better performance than the currently existing spacers. And then finally, uh, we do have an ongoing clinical trial which utilizes a drug called flutamide. And so this drug has actually been around for some time. It's already FDA approved for prostate cancer. But our research here has shown that at least in prostate cancer cells in culture, as well as in mice with prostate cancer, that flutamide has different actions against prostate cancer in conjunction with radiation. And it appears that this drug has new properties which, when combined with radiation, allow it to enhance the damage to cancer cells from radiation. We are very excited about the possibility of using this drug in conjunction with radiation and are currently performing studies to see whether it has the same actions within patients as it does within the laboratory. So radiation has historically been well documented to be a useful and valid treatment option for patients who have what we call localized prostate cancer, which is cancer which is still contained within the gland or perhaps may have spread just beyond the gland or into the lymph nodes, but recently there has been quite a bit of research showing that patients who also have limited metastatic disease benefit from radiation treatment. 
Whereas in the past, those patients were not thought to benefit from radiation and were often started directly on hormonal therapy alone, now there's research showing that radiation to the prostate for those patients can help improve survival. And also that radiation may be useful in treating areas of metastatic disease, such as the bone or lymph nodes, which are outside of the pelvic area. So I think it's very important nowadays for patients who have been told that they have metastatic disease to be considered for radiation treatment and have a consultation with a radiation oncologist to see if they would benefit.